Hi. Do you know me? I'm... Like millions of other women in America, I had sex with a Kennedy. So in order to be special, I carry this. The Equity Express card. That way, whether I'm getting tackled on a beach, watching a senator show me his briefs, or having my bra dusted for fingerprints, I can be sure the Equity Express card will be there for me. It's accepted all over the world and in most West Palm Beach hotels and bars. Tell them the woman with the blue dot on her face sent you. Thank you, Ms. I may not always remember where I took off my pantyhose, but I always remember to carry this. The Equity Express card. Equity Express. If you leave home without it, make sure you get some grass stains on your clothes as evidence. I'm Senator Edward Kennedy. You know, some people say us Kennedys think we're above the law. Only problem is, sometimes the law forgets that we are Kennedys. And that's why I carry this. The Kennedy carte blanche. So whether I'm bailing relatives out of jail or just bailing water out of my car, whether I'm buying expert testimony or putting a high-priced lawyer on retainer with the Kennedy carte blanche, the sky's the limit. Most importantly, this card identifies you as a bona fide Kennedy, and that makes you above the law. So whether we're trying to pass the bar, or just passing by a bar, when we get off, we get off scot-free. Thanks to this. The Kennedy carte launch. Don't leave the House or the Senate without it. Willie, keep it in your pants. <laughs> Sip on a drink, glad with the guide on a funky scene. Here comes another one of those funky, funny, more money shows. A cast for laugh, for silence, for pros and sisters with twisters. For you, for looking listener, it seems you don't believe, so you believe what I can picture. So put it to your short and thought, we'll make it snappy. With jokes and folks and folks to keep you happy. No need to hold your remote control. Chill, this show's got soul. All aboard, all aboard. The train up a chuckle, you better snuggle up, couple up, want a double up, double, yeah. It's hard to believe, but some of the best things in life are free. So fellas, grab your girl, tell her that you love her, cause that's the way you're living when you're living a living color. America's wealthiest people have made their fortunes in real estate. Now one man can give you the safe, simple, sure way to financial freedom. Do you recognize this man? If you don't, you're not watching enough television. He's Tommy Wu. Hey, idiot! Rotting in your own filth! What do you think of this excellent lifestyle I am living? It all belongs to me because I am just so damn rich. When I come to this country, I was both person. Now I person who own both. You like diamond? You like pearl? You like hot tub? Then come to my seminar, you piece of animal dropping! And learn to be so damn rich like me. And after all that, you were just so damn rich. Uh, Mr. Wu, excuse me. No, I, I'm sorry. I, you know, I just don't completely understand. Here, yeah, all you need to understand. You just an insignificant hair on toilet on life. But I know how you feel. I was a brain dead loser like you. Then one day I get a letter. My uncle was dead. And he left me, Tommy Wu, $10 million. Why can't you do that? What's stopping you from being rich? I took the Tommy Wu seminar, and two days later, I lost my entire family in a horrible car accident. But I made $7 million. Thank you, Tommy Wu. Thank you, the genius. Move, you shut up and lay there. You are nothing but a love pillow for Tommy Wu. And you, you so fat and lazy, you stink like roadkill. 
If I saw you crossing a road, I would swear to kill you. Take a shower, change your clothes, and come to my seminar. Learn the secret of Tommy Wu. Don't be stupid. Take the Tommy Wu seminar this Saturday at the parking lot behind Bob's House of Value. You'll learn how to be... Just so damn rich! <laughs> You know what's gonna take five clowns to do this act. Yep. Yeah, where's that replacement clown you were supposed to find? There he is! Oh. Hey! You're late! <laughs> you don't want him, what did it? His name is Homie D Clown. I'm his parole officer. Mm -hmm. He'll be filling in here as part of the work release program. <laughs> Just keep an eye on him, huh? I gotcha. Heck of a Check again, I'm gonna bust your goofy ass. <laughs> Let me give you a little clown advice, homie. Now, if it bends, that's funny. But if it breaks, that ain't funny. <laughs> what if I snap your neck? Is that funny? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll Ladies have to check my clown book on that. Of all ages, let's give a rousing welcome for Chuckles and his friends. <laughs> Let me get this straight. Does this job require me to debase and degrade myself for the amusement of these little children? Yep, you got it, kid. <laughs> You're doing fine. Now you're getting some laughs. Just remember, one, Chuckles is the star of this show. <laughs> Two, Chuckles takes the hits. And now Chuckles gets the laughs. And three! And three, if homie don't like it, homie won't play it. Yeah, well, uh, we'll get back to that later. Hey, kids! Who wants to see Flip of the Clown do a triple back somersault into this little Kids, homie's kind of being a bad clown. <laughs> now you know what we do to bad clowns. <laughs> now that was funny. <laughs> now watch the bad clown retaliate with a little magic trick. I'm going to make the, the funny clown here disappear. Abracadabra, abracadab. Get your ass out of here. <laughs> Hey, 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 now what'd I tell you, huh? I said if it breaks, that ain't funny. Now, Chuckles is a star of the show. We'll get back to you later. Okay, kid! <laughs> Who wants to see Chuckles fly? <laughs> Can't hear you, kids. Who wants to see Chuckles fly? <laughs> now, just like the fusion, don't do anything else, you bonehead. You got it? Sure, you want me to take orders from you and let you tell me what a clown is really supposed to do and completely repress my own creative impulse to satisfy your clown ego. What do you mean, bonehead? Oh, it's a damn kid. It's time for homie to have some good old jailhouse fun. So, what have we learned, if nothing else, little children? That just because I look like a clown don't mean you can treat me like one. Yeah! <laughs> okay, while we sweeping up what's left of Chuckles, why don't we sing the Chuckles the Clown song? Yeah! Sing along with me. Chuckles the Clown. Chuckles the Clown. Love to mess around. Love to mess around. That's why Chuckles is splatted on the ground. He thought I was his tool. He could treat me like a fool. But homie showed him that he ain't nobody sucking. Won't be ill-treated by no low-life $2 minimum wage. Making stupid jackass like him. Y'all better sing this damn song. <laughs> close 
Kuttner. For years now, black entrepreneurs have greatly contributed to the success of big business in this country without receiving full credit for some of their groundbreaking innovations. In July of 1979, Jerome Johnson worked for Zach's Auto. While performing some routine maintenance, he made a trend-setting discovery. Hey, Jerome, man, now look, be careful, man. Look, I tried to get that nut off that oil pan earlier, but it was just on too tight. Hey, look, man, I know what I'm doing. I've been doing oil changes since I was 13. See, all I got to do is get a good grip on this. It was at that moment that Jerome realized he had discovered a new hairstyle. Y'all have a good time now. I just love your hair, Jerry. <laughs> Pull! So today we salute Jerome Johnson, inventor of the Jerry Pearl. I'm Tommy Davidson, and this has been another great moment in black history. Hello, and welcome to Ebony Jet Essence Right On Showcase. I'm your host, Louis Bedford. Tonight, in the tradition of Spike Lee, John Singleton, and Maddie Rich, we're going to meet one of the newest young black filmmakers to make his mark in Hollywood. We're on location on the set of his latest film. Please give a warm Ebony Jet Essence Right On Showcase welcome to Jamil Jamal. Jamil, thanks for joining us. You seem awful young to be a filmmaker, only seven years old. See, that's where you're wrong. I'm seven and a half. Okay, seven and a half, and you already have your own production company? That's right. It's called 40 Candy Bars and a Bike. You see, I started this company because there's no blacks in kids' TV. Uh, can you give us an example? Yeah, the Flintstones. Are you telling me there were no blacks in the caveman times? Who the hell did Fred get those ribs? The big ones that tipped over his car? You don't get those at the mall, man. But that's just one example. Okay, what about the Jetsons? What, there's no black people in the future either? Man, all they had to do was flip two letters and Elroy could have been Leroy. So you're saying there are no black characters in children's programming? Just one, the brother on the road runner, Willie Coyote. Oh, okay. you mean Wild E. Coyote. He's a brother? Yeah, and look what they did to him. He didn't have no job. He was always buying stuff. You never know where he got the money. And all he wanted was a little golden bird for dinner. I can go on. I've got charts, graphs, diagrams, and reports to back up what I'm saying. Well, let's see them. Uh, my dog threw up on me. Now, many have called you the young Spike Lee, the next John Singleton. That stinks, man. I'm nothing like them. They don't understand my pain, my suffering. I can't drive. I can't stay up past eight. Man, I'm wearing carabier underpants. Look, I understand, Jamil, that we have a clip from your film. Would you mind setting this up for us? Sure. I made this movie for my people, the kids. It's a story of a boy who stands up for his rights against a man. It's called The Three Little Pigs. <laughs> This is a Cracker Jack house. 
No way, you three little pigs. You're not gonna treat me like you treat Willie Coyote. Next, if you don't open up, we're gonna huff and puff and run your butt in. Just because I'm black doesn't mean I'm a Cracker Jack dealer. I'm a positive role model. I'm not afraid of nothing. Oh, that's it. I'm gonna tell your mom. There's a very powerful message there, Jamil. What does it mean? The message is this. Buy my three little pigs hats, shirts, and video games. I learned that from Spike Lee. And watch for my next film, Little Red Riding in the Hood. Thank you, Jamil, for joining us. And thank you. Join me again on the Ebony Jet Essence Right On Showcase. I'm your host, Louis Bedford. Good night. Okay, kids, let's get ready for Santa Claus. Everybody stand back. I'm going to light the fireplace. <laughs> ho, 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 and howdy, folks. <laughs> wait, wait, my fire marshal. Hey, kids, look who's here. Yay! Are you really Santa Claus? <laughs> Are you joking? Santa Claus is just a marketing tool for big business. Wake up, son. Nope. I'm here to make sure your holiday season is a safe one. Fuzz a night before Christmas. And all through the house. We're da -da -da. deadly fire. <laughs> now, what kind of snack were you kids going to leave for this so-called Saint Nick? Cookies. <laughs> Sounds delicious. But what if the jar is empty this year and you decide to make them a waffle instead? You pull out your waffle iron, you go to pour in the mix, somebody says, hey, look, Rudolph's pinching a loaf on the neighbor's lawn. Where, where, where? Didn't that hurt? <laughs> like the dickens. <laughs> Quick! Somebody hand me the lawn cabin syrup! <laughs> hey, listen, buddy, they said you were supposed to bring toys for the kids. Take a chill pill, Dad. You can't sing Jingle Bells when your head's on fire. That's a beautiful tree you got there. Let Santa show you something! Now, let's just say the guy who sold you this Christmas tree is an avid bear hunter. And he threw in a little something extra. You stick your leg in there, trying to locate the biggest present. <laughs> Santa, are you okay? <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Nothing a little eggnog and Demerol won't fix. Well, what about our toy, Santa? I bet I know what you want, little darling. What? A Barbie Power Wheels car. Oh, yay! Hold it, Curly Sue. A go-kart like this can be a lot of fun. But it can also be a fiery death trap on the highway to hell. Let's just say there's an outbreak of psychosis at the North Pole, and a demented elf switches your little battery with a V6, 350 horsepower, fuel-injected, turbo engine! Like so! You're having a manic depressive episode. You think you're Tom Cruise in Days of Thunder? You jump in the car, put your pedal to the metal, and hold on, Barbie! You call it a hole, I call it a fire exit. We want to get those wheels alive. Okay, children, gather around while Santa gives you the safety tip that could save Christmas. Now, what do you like to roast on an open fire? Chestnuts! You got it, Peanuts gang! But say you're a World War II veteran and you haven't cleaned out your pockets since D-Day! You're searching around in there, trying to come up with a chestnut, and you accidentally pull out a live hanging. <laughs> Santa, don't! Everybody relax! Take a chill pill, would you? I am a fire marshal! <laughs> Can't pull fire marshal's hand. 
He sees you when you're sleeping, and he knows when you're about to combust. Idiot. I don't have any fire insurance. Well, now you know what to ask for next Christmas. <laughs> hey, there's some young tykes building a snowman. Oh, they're right there, kids. I think Frosty could use a much bigger nose. <laughs> Let's have to show you something! Hey, everybody, we'd like to introduce you to our very, very special guest, Derek Brown. Say hi. Hey! 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 And on behalf of everybody here at In Living Color, we'd like to wish you a very happy, happy holiday. holiday.